All right, guys, uh, it's gonna be gonna be huge. <laughs> that's that's what uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon does when he does uh, the Trump the uh, Trump impersonation. But here he goes. This is Mr. Myesis, and uh, I'm gonna talk about using and creating confidence intervals for one sample proportions. I'm gonna use this idea of, of Donald Trump, and um, you know, right now this is uh, 2016, and we're hearing a lot about uh, Mr. Trump and his bid for the presidency. So it's kind of relevant right now. We'll see how, how it works in a few years if you're still watching this video. So um, the first thing I need to talk about really is some important vocabulary and variables about confidence intervals. So P is the population proportion. That's the proportion of the entire population in which we're, you know, we're looking for. Now, we're not going to have this, right? We won't know this for, uh, for confidence intervals. We will know a sample proportion because we're trying to find, we're trying to estimate the population proportion. So uh, we're going to have p hat. Q hat is going to be 1 minus p hat, which is the proportion of failure or the, the, um, the not, I guess the not sample proportion. Sorry, sweet water. Um, N is our sample size. We have Z star, all right? Z star is called our critical Z score. This is our Z value that corresponds to our confidence level. And our confidence is the probability that our interval is going to contain the population parameter. In this case, for this case, we're doing the proportion. So um, our confidence level is the probability that our interval is going to contain that population proportion all right so here's a lot of other stuff here's how we how we do a confidence interval for a one sample proportion so we can estimate what the real the true proportion is of a population using inference based on a sample and we use that by creating a what we call a confidence interval now in order to create a confidence interval we're going to be using a normal model so in order for us to use a normal model we have to pass the conditions so our first condition and so we're going to go over our conditions in just a second and, and here i'll just write them on the side remember our conditions were one our sample must be taken randomly two we have to have less than 10 percent of our population And three, since we don't know P, we're going to go N P hat and N Q hat are going to need to be greater than or equal to 10. All right? So we're going to check all of those if we're doing a confidence interval. So here are the steps. First, you're going to determine what we call the standard error. Now, we have P hat, so we don't have a standard deviation because we don't have, we don't have a lot of samples and we don't have... Uh, the population standard deviation. So the best we can do is find what we call a standard error. And that's calculated the same way as the standard deviation was calculated, PQ over N, except we're using hats. So P hat over, P hat Q hat over N, the square root of that. Our second step is determine what Z star we're using for our level of confidence. Now the problem is almost always gonna tell you what level of confidence we have unless it's asking for the level of confidence. In that way, in that case, you'll have more information. Um, for, for most basic purposes, 90, 95, and 99% confidence are, are kind of our uh, most popular confidence levels. And these are the Z values that go with each of those confidence levels. And I, f I could find those just by looking at the area under the normal model um, and finding what area goes with 95% in the middle. And that z-score will come out to be 1. The area is 95%. My z-score is going to come out to 1.96. Um, so if we, have, if we wanted to know a, le a different level of confidence, we would have to find that z-score. But for now, uh, if you just kind of memorize these guys, these are the ones that pop up most. And I'll show you how to find the level of confidence later on. Um, so uh, the second thing you need to do is need to find the margin of error. And the margin of error is found by taking your Z star and multiplying it by your standard error. Then finally, we're going to determine our confidence interval. And we're going to interpret it in context. And that's going to be P hat plus or minus our margin of error. And, and if you're in my class, we kind of saw that. We had P hat was our, um, our poll numbers, our poll percentage. 
and then we added or subtracted our margin of error from that to create our confidence interval. And what we're going to say is we are blank percent confident that the true proportion of whatever, right, of, uh, of whatever the context is, is between blank and blank, whatever you get here. All right, so let's take a look at a couple examples. Let's go ahead and consider a fictional problem. So these are this is just made up. I have no idea how any of this would work. But suppose you take a random sample of 1,015 Republican registered voters in Stanislaus County. And of those surveyed, 234 would support the Donald Trump, not Donald Duck, of course, uh, for president of the United States. Let's create a confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of all Republican registered voters that support Donald Trump. Now, for this problem, I'm going to say let's go, let's go and create a 95% confidence level. It, it has to tell you, it has to tell you what level of confidence you want. All right, so we're going to put, we're going to say 95% confidence, which means that uh, there's a 95% probability that the um, the true proportion is going to lie within our interval. All right, um, so let's go and calculate that. So first step is going to, first of all, uh, we, we randomly selected um, NP and NQ are going to be greater than because we've got we've got a pretty big amount right here. Um, and then let's, this is less than 10% of all Republican voters in Stanislaus County. We're going to assume that. So we have three conditions that we need to satisfy. I'm not writing them down because of time constraints, but those are it. So uh, the first step would be to find our standard error. And our standard error p hat is going to be square root of p hat q hat over n. So p hat is going to be 234 divided by 1115. Where did I get that? Right here. These are the ones that support Donald Trump. This is our random sample. All right. So 234 out of 1015. And I'm going to leave it as a fraction for now, just so that way it'll add up correctly all right then my q hat is going to be what's left over so i'm going to go and take 1015 and subtract from 234 and i'm gonna get 781 divided by n and take the square root of that all right so let's use the calculator for that I'm going to get 0 0.0132. Well, that's kind of off. Um, and that is going to be my standard error. All right. The second thing I'm going to do is figure out my margin of error. And that's going to be Z star. So 95% confidence. Let's go back and find out what that is. Our Z star is 1.96. So we're going to have 1.96 times 0 0.0132 which is going to be 0 0.2591 and then finally we're going to um, we're going to create our confidence interval and we're going to take p hat plus or minus my margin of error all right so p hat was and i got to calculate p hat so let me calculate p hat p hat was 234 over 1015 and that's going to be 23 0.2305. All right, so I'm going to add. So first, I'm going to subtract this from that. All right, so I made a little error here. This should be 0 0.02591. And then I'm going to subtract that from my p hat. And I'm going to get 0 0.2046. I'm going to add it to my p hat. And I'm going to get 0.2564. So um, this is 20.46% and 25.64%, which means that uh, I am 95, so this is the way we write it in context. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of Donald Trump supporters in Stanislaus County is between 20.46% and 
0.64%. All right. Okay, so that's the example. Um, I'll run through a second example here for you. Uh, but that, that's how we find the confidence interval. All right, here's my second example. Suppose that only 5% of, um, of 200 students randomly surveyed at CSU stand said that they own a pet. Create and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of pet owning students at CSU stand. Remember, you should always, um, since we're using a normal model for Z star, you should always do your uh, three conditions all right random less 200 students is less than 10 percent and i'm going to have you if you're in my class you're going to have to write this out in context 200 students is less than 10 percent of this of the population of csu stand number three npnq you know five percent of 200 95 percent of 200 are those greater than 10 okay you have to show that and then once you do you're ready to go all right, so we're ready to go here. We're going to first find our standard error. And that is the square root of 0 0.05 times 0 0.95 divided by 200. And we get those numbers here. This is my P hat. And my Q hat is 95%. All right, we calculate that. We get 0 0.0154. Then we're going to find our margin of error. Our margin of error is going to be our Z star, which is 1.96 because we're doing 95% confidence, times our standard error, 1.0154, which is going to give me 0 0.03. 0, 02. I'm taking out four decimal places. All right, then my confidence interval is p hat plus my margin of error plus or minus my margin of error. So p hat was um, 0 0.05. So we're going to put do 0 0.05 minus, always do minus first, minus 0 0.03. And 0 0.05 plus 0 0.0302. And we're going to get 0 0.0198 and 0 0.082. All right, so then I can write my conclusion. I always want to write my conclusion in context. So I'm going to go and write my conclusion here. I'm going to get rid of this on screen keyboard. I don't know what that's doing there. Okay. So here's my conclusion. I would say we or I, I'm going to say we this time, we are 95% confident. Again, it's, that's the probability that our true proportion is within our confidence interval. We are 95% confident that the true proportion of students at CSU stand that own pets is between 1.98% and 8.02%. All right. And that's it. That's all there is to, let me see if I can uh, get rid of that. That's all there is to making and creating confidence intervals. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye.